Hello and welcome to our Now Faith program. We're so excited to have you join us. Can you believe it? Already one month has passed us by. It's amazing how quickly time goes by. But you know, family, I'm just reminded of a scripture in Ephesians 5 and 16. And in that scripture, Paul writes and says that we ought to redeem the time or that we ought to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. But I want you to know, family, that our faith is based on the solidity of God's Word. We put our trust in His Word. Our trust is in the finished work of Calvary. And you and I, because of the finished work of Calvary, are standing on triumphant ground, victorious ground. And I want you to know that Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. Not a church where there's just two or three people holding on for dear life, but a glorious church, a powerful church. Jesus is coming back for such a church. And I want you to know today that we love you, we appreciate you, and we welcome you. And now, I want to invite you to join me in one of our most recent services at the Jesus Dome, which is the home of the Durban Christian Center. Today, we're gonna to be looking at 2 Kings chapter six, and we're gonna begin from verse one. And then we wanna to welcome today all of those that are watching you on Faith Broadcasting Network, and you are watching our Now Faith program. God bless you, and we welcome you today. Hallelujah, welcome, 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 welcome. And I trust that God will bless you as this word comes to you today. Second Kings chapter six, if you have your Bibles, we're gonna look at verse one and we're gonna read Second Kings chapter six, amen. And it says, and the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, see now, when? Now, right now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. Amen. He didn't just went. He was sent. He said, go. Then one said, please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. And so he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. Every person busy doing what God had called them to do. Verse 5, but as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. And he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed them the place. And so he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. We are continuing, family, with are we there yet? Are we there yet was the word that God gave for us in 2015 about following the cloud. Uh, the, the Israelites knew when the cloud moved, they had to move. When the cloud stopped, they would stop. Amen. And they had to follow the cloud. And as long as they followed the cloud, everything was fine. Amen. Until eventually, 40 years later, they found themselves in the land of Canaan that flowed with milk and honey. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. So when we look at the story, we understand that it's got to do with an ax and somebody chopping trees with an ax. How many of you know that if you don't pay attention to that ax, pretty soon the edge of that ax becomes dull? And that ax, instead of being sharp, becomes blunt. And now you have to use a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of energy. And whereas you could have chopped down 50 trees, now because the ax is dull, you can only chop 10 trees down. Listen, I want to tell you, when we pray and we fast, hallelujah, it's so that God can bring through our prayer and fasting a sharpness back to the edge of our ex. It can bring a sharpness to us in the Holy Ghost. My sermon title today is, is called Sharp, Sharp. Tell, touch somebody and tell them, Sharp, Sharp. Hallelujah. 
I like what Abraham Lincoln once said. He said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. Abraham Lincoln was a skilled woodsman, having cut down trees, chopped firewood, and split rails to build fences since he was a young man. And there were two things that Lincoln knew too well. Number one, he knew that a dull axe meant that you would have to exert more energy and more strength. And number two, he knew that a dull axe can prove to be far more dangerous than a sharp one. Can you say amen? Praise God. Using a dull X means you have to use a whole lot more energy and you won't be able to chop down as many trees as a sharp X. In other words, there's some things that you will not be able to accomplish because why? Your X is dull. You are not sharp in the Holy Ghost. But when you are sharp in the Spirit, hallelujah, when your walk with God is sharp and your anointing is sharp and your worship is sharp and your faith is sharp, hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are able to do a whole lot, not because of your power and your might, but because of Holy Ghost power. Would you lift your hands and say, sharp, sharp. sharp. Hallelujah. Jesus said it like this in Mark 4, 28, New Living Translation. He says, the earth produces the crops. First, a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain, ri the grain ripens. Why? Because growth is a natural progression in life. Hallelujah. And if that's what takes place in the natural world, how much more in the spiritual world? How much more when it comes to the kingdom of God? Lift your hands and say after me, growth. growth. Say it like you have a bit of faith. Growth, growth. is a natural progression in life and it is a sign of health and life and healthy things will always grow if a thing is not growing it's perhaps because it's not healthy hey come on if your marriage is not growing maybe it's because it's not healthy why because healthy things will automatically grow if a seed is healthy and disease-free, when you put that seed in the ground, it will grow. When a child pops out of a womb and that child is healthy, automatically that child will grow. Sometimes instead of focusing on the growing part, we ought to look at the health because if I can bring health into the equation and make sure that the thing is healthy, then I am guaranteed growth. Why? Because healthy things grow. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, healthy things will grow. So if my finances are not growing, oh, perhaps I can look and see how I'm doing business and conducting my financial affairs. And if I can work in bringing health into my financial matters and in my financial affairs and do things God's way, what can I expect? I can expect my finances to grow. If my marriage is not growing, then perhaps I can work on bringing health into my relationship with my spouse and work on bringing help into the equation. Because why? Healthy things will grow. Can you say amen? Come on, lift up your hands and say, My God, my God is the God of increase. And when I follow and obey Him, everything in my life will grow if I work on adding health to my life then my life will grow because healthy things grow can you say amen, amen. praise God hallelujah I know some of you are looking at me like that I don't want you to hear me with your natural ears this morning I'm speaking to your spirit, man. Some of you maybe might be getting upset with me, but I am rattling your cage. Why? Because, oh, pastor, I'm happy where I am. No, that's a lie from the pit of hell. You have to be growing. You have to be moving in God. 
There is momentum in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, John 7, 38, He who believes in me, as the Spirit has said, uh, out of his innermost belly shall flow, shall flow, shall flow, shall flow. He didn't say out of your innermost belly shall be a stagnant pool and you'll sit in it and have a bath every day and be happy in it. What happens when moving water stops moving? It becomes a breeding ground for diseases. When you are stuck in a place because you are comfortable, you attract demons. You attract problems. You attract diseases. All kinds of things will begin to use your comfort zone. And suddenly, doubt. You'll find yourself now operating in doubt. And now you're pointing a finger and blaming everybody and ridiculing everybody. Why? Because you are in your comfort zone. We were never called to maintain ground. We were called to push. If you have faith, faith will always do this. That's how you're walking. We ought to be walking like this. Why are you walking? Faith. That's what faith does. It pushes you. You know, how faith pushes you. Always forward into the things of God. Hallelujah. That's what faith does. I said, that's what faith does. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. So they got ready for increase. You better touch two or three people and tell them 2015 is my year of growth. It's going to be where I increase in God. My anointing is going to increase. My faith is going to increase. My, my ability is going to increase. Creativity is going to increase in me. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. My goodness. <laughs> and so the Bible says that when they got to this place and they began to work, come on. The Bible says they all got there and they all began to work together. They all began to chop the trees. Come on. All of us working together. The Bible says that one of them, as he began to chop, what happened? That he didn't notice that the accent was getting a little bit loose. He didn't pay attention. And because he didn't pay attention, very soon he lost the axe head completely. Actually, what happened is, in the spirit really, the significance is that he began to lose the edge to his axe. And that's the natural progression. When you lose the edge to something, very soon, if you don't pay it attention, you will lose the whole thing altogether. Let me give you an example. If you lose the edge to your marriage and you don't pay attention and you don't fix it and do whatever is necessary, very soon you'll lose your whole marriage altogether. If you start to lose the edge to your business and you don't pay attention to it, family, what will happen? Very soon you'll lose the whole business altogether. You see... As I said, what, what we do, we do because of the Spirit of God. When an axe is sharp, I mean, the axe bites into the wood. Can you see that? I mean, there's not much effort. Three more of those chops in this tree would be broken. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Make more like 300 chops. But it's sharp. There's not much effort. And that axe bites into the wood. Let me tell you, you are so much more effective when you are sharp in the spirit because the sharpness of your spirit bites into what you are faced with. Whatever the enemy has said, because you're sharp in the spirit, that sharpness will bite into what the enemy has said, and it neutralizes what the enemy has said. Can you say amen in this place? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, what we have to do is if the axe becomes dull, we have to sharpen the axe. So, they tell me, my wife's going to get nervous with me holding these utensils. They say, if the axe has become dull, the first thing that you ought to get is a file. And they say that with the file, what you do is you do something like that. Okay. 
I do this all the time. <laughs> you, you, you're supposed to use the file, and when you do this, you are getting rid of the, um, the dull pieces on this edge. You are actually getting rid of all the debris. You are rubbing off what is unnecessary on this X. And I thought, who does the file represent? And the file represents all the little people in this place that, uh, you know, when you're standing here and there's somebody next to you and you're wishing, do they have to sing so loud? <laughs> and if they're singing so loud, wouldn't it be so much nicer if they could sing like, like in tune? I might not be a nightingale, but this person is like a gale in the night. <laughs> and it brings an irritation and a frustration. No, that person is just a file. It's getting rid of some debris in your heart and dealing with some bad attitude. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? When they take the offering in this place, they close the door. Do they have to? I, I need to go. I need to move. I need to walk. I need to. I need to. I, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> this is what's happening. Hallelujah. How many of you know there's rules in the house? And what we do is for the protection of the congregation. But actually, this is what's happening. No, we're just getting rid of that bad attitude. There's some things. The X is dull. We've got to bring the dull in to get rid of that dullness. And then just now, that X is going to be sharp again. So what do we do? Then, once we've taken rid of all those bits and pieces, all the debris, we use what we call a whetstone. And what they do is they take a bit of oil and they pour some of this oil on the whetstone. And then they begin to sharpen. This is now a more refined work. It's going to bring the edge back to this axe, hallelujah. And how many of you know that the stone represents the Word of God? But look, we, we, if you just got the Word, man, that's not going to cut it for you. You need the oil on the Word. Come on. Well, pastor, I know the Hebrew and the Greek and, and, and you know, I've got all the, 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 the facts. Well, has the Hebrew and the Greek helped your marriage? No, because you've got no oil. I'm all for the Hebrew and the Greek, and, 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 and I do all of that. But unless there is the oil of the Holy Ghost that causes the word that you read to become flesh and blood on the inside of you, it's not going to bring sharpness to you. All you'll have is a whole lot of facts and information, but your acts will still be dull. But when you got the oil, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost making the Word of God alive on the inside of you. It's going to make the X sharp again so that that X is supposed to have a bite, but it hasn't. I didn't do a sharpening well. Good job. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? And so the Bible says, as they began to chop, that that X head flew off the handle and it landed in the river. Oh my goodness, my accent has gone. What's the, what's the matter, brother? It's a borrowed one as well. And I was thinking about that, you know. We don't do anything here because it's mine. We do things because it's borrowed from God. That authority is borrowed. That power is borrowed. That grace is borrowed. My goodness. I, 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 I don't stand here and say, wow, look at John Torrance. Isn't he great? What would Durban do without John Torrance? <laughs> what would South Africa do without John Torrance? Oh, my goodness. Man, if I, I, if I did that, I, I, it would be better for me to go and sell ice cream, man. But I have to get into that calling that God has called me and say, God... When I step into that calling, I step into borrowed favor. I step into borrowed grace. I step into borrowed God-given ability. I step into borrowed whatever else it is that I need. It's not me. It's God on the inside of me. It's almost like the Iron Man. How many of you have seen the movie? 
He's just a normal man. But when he stands, gets into that suit, hallelujah, that suit has got everything that he needs to carry out his mission. Hallelujah. And when you step into that calling, I'm not talking about you being an accountant, uh, a businessman, a mechanic, whatever it else is that you do. I'm talking about your functioning in the body of Christ, you being called to the kingdom of God. And while you are a mechanic, while you are an accountant, while you are whatever it is that you are, in that capacity, you step into your calling. And in that calling, brother, you have the anointing. In that calling, you have the strength. In in that calling, you have the favor. In that calling, you have the wisdom. In that calling, you have the grace. Amen. Just stay in your calling. What happened to Judas when he stepped out of that calling? Satan was waiting for him. And when you step out of that calling, you step into your own ability, and effectively you end up with either an ax that is dull, or you just end up with a handle, and you become of no use in the kingdom of God. Where did that exit land? Come on, let's go back to the place and find the exit. I mean, some of us might have said, that's it, let's pack up. The exit is lost. It's sunk to the bottom, to the bottom of that river. There's no ways we're going to find it. Let's close shop. Come on, this Bible, it doesn't work. Let's close it. Let's all go and live our own way. Come on. Oh, listen, being a life group doesn't work. Let's, let's call it a day. No. What did the prophet do? He said, come, let's go back to that place. And the Bible says he took with him a stick and he threw the stick out into the water to where the ax said had landed. And what happened? The ax that's supposed to sink and stay down began to rise up, began to float on the river surface. And he said, come, come, prophet. I want you to reach out Put your hand in there and take what is yours by faith. Hallelujah. You know what happened? That stick that represents the cross is what is able to change the nature. It changed the nature of that X head. Iron is of a density that normally it sinks. But when he threw that stick out onto the water, the cross touched that accent, and that accent's nature was changed. And what was changed now began to float to the surface. I don't know what your accent represents today. Perhaps you're saying, Pastor, my marriage has sunk into the bottom. No, it's not over until the cross says it's over, until God says it's over. Come on, let's bring the cross to your marriage so that your marriage can touch the natures of that marriage. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, let's bring that, let's bring the cross to your finances. Let's bring the cross to your business. Whatever it is. Hallelujah. How many of you know there is power in the cross? Listen, family, I want you to know the thing that separates us from all the other faiths in this world is we have the cross. The cross has the power to change nature. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man or any woman be in Christ, he's a brand new creature. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God in this place. And so the cross, the power of the cross is what changed the nature. And this morning, come on, I don't know what it is, perhaps, that you've lost. I don't know what it is perhaps that has sunk to the bottom of your river. But I feel like in this place today, there is the cross. And when we take the cross to our problem, let the cross change the nature of whatever it is that you have lost. Maybe it's a business. Come on. Maybe it's some things that you have lost. Come on. Let's bring the cross to that place. Let's believe God for a miracle. It's not over until God says it's over. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. You see, the cross has the power to change lives, to change natures on the inside of you and me. No other religion has the power to do that. No other religion has the power to do that except it be the cross, the finished work of Calvary. 
Praise God. Well, I hope you enjoyed that word. Amen. That really God desires you and I to be sharp in the Spirit. And just like an axe, that axe needs to be sharp and maintained in its sharpness as well. The Bible says that we ought to be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves. Praise God. So I want to thank you for watching us. But I have some really great, exciting news, especially for those of you who love good, Christian music. Terry McAlman, yes, Terry McAlman, songwriter, recording artist, and worship leader from Dallas, Texas, will be performing at a one night concert at the Jesus Dome right here in Durban on Friday night. All right, now you need to diarize this February the 20th, 7 p.m. Don't miss what will be a great evening of praise and worship. Boy, oh boy, if there's anybody that can lead us into the presence of the Lord, it surely is Terry McAlman. So I want to encourage you, bring friends, invite those that wouldn't ordinarily come to church and come to the Jesus Dome Friday night, February the 20th at 7 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there. Now, before we close, I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I bring every person right now that's been watching. And I pray that your word would have found its mark in their hearts, in their lives, that whatever the need is, I thank you that your word has the power to deliver and meet that need. And I take authority right now over every spirit of fear and intimidation that has come against your people. You said in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I thank you for the spirit of love that right now reaches every heart, every person here in Jesus' name. And friend, before we close, I'd like to just invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've been watching this program and the love of God has been drawing you and making the person of Jesus real to you because we serve a very real Jesus. He's a loving, living, resurrected Savior. And that love right now is tugging at your heart. And Jesus loves you. He loves you irrespective of what you've done, what you've said, how you've behaved. He doesn't condone the sin, but He loves you nonetheless. And today that love is tugging at your heart. And right now, right now, as you're watching, you are ready to invite Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Would you say this after me? Heavenly Father, 
I come to you today in Jesus' name. Thank you for not giving up on me. But right now, your love is tugging at my heart. And I choose to respond to your love. Come into my heart, Jesus. Thank you for your blood that cleanses me and washes me. And I receive eternal life and the forgiveness of all of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wasn't that great? Don't you feel a whole lot better? I know that you do. We would so love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, whatever it is, would you please just write us or email us? The details are coming on your screen right now. And from all of us here at the Durban Christian Center, we love you. God bless you. And remember, with God, all things are possible.